Hi dear friends and subscribers, this is your host again uh, with your uh, favorite uh, cricket show, uh, the Cricket Happening Show today. And in this Cricket Happening Show, I am going to start off with the West Indies Zimbabwe match. In fact, they have just gone to lunch, West Indies have gone to lunch, chasing 12 runs for victory. West Indies are 9 for 1 at lunch uh, at the, uh, in the first test which has been played at the Kensington Oval Bridgetown in Barbados. In fact, Zimbabwe were, uh, they, they really uh, put up a very, very shoddy performance, in fact. And today, uh, the Zimbabweans were bowled out in their second innings for 107. Uh, just, uh, just recapping what happened uh, yesterday, uh, West Indies replied with 307, with uh, Darren Sammy uh, contributing a very hard hit 73 of 69 balls with 8 fours and 4 sixes. He was pretty uh, severe on uh, Graham Creamer, the, the right arm leg spinner who went for runs uh, plenty. In fact, Creamer bowled 20 overs, no maidens, 103 runs, so no wickets. Every batsman went after him. Marlon Samuels contributed 51. He also went after him. Uh, Darren Sammy also went after him. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, West Indies were in a spot of bother at one stage. They were 151 for six when they lost uh, Darren uh, um, uh, Shunara and Chandra Paul. But uh, 106 run partnership, uh, which was uh, done in pretty uh, quick time, especially with uh, da Darren Sammy really uh, hitting the ballers all over the park and especially uh, he took full toll uh, of Graham Kramer, the right arm leg spinner, uh, who was carted for four sixes. All the four sixes that he hit was the bowling of Graham Kramer. In addition to that, he also hit lots of boundaries uh, of the bowling of Kramer. In fact, the majority of runs that uh, Darren Sammy, the captain, had was 73 of 69 balls. And what Darren Sammy did, he decided offense is the best form of defense. And that's what he did precisely. And uh, that's what enabled that 106 run partnership to blossom. And Dinesh Ramadan, uh, the wicket keeper, giving him admirable company, making 62 with eight boundaries. So that was what uh, West Indies did. Now, that was what enabled West Indies uh, to actually reach a score of 307. Uh, at a stage, they were 151 for six, with uh, Jarvis uh, picking up a five wicket bag, 17.2 as career best figures, 17.2 over small winnings. 54 runs and 5 wickets, uh, 2 wickets apiece to Tendai Chatara and Hamilton Muscarza and 1 to Raymond Price. But uh, West Indies, I said that they were in a bit of trouble, but uh, due to the 106 run, very aggressive partnership between the wicketkeeper Dinesh Ramadan and Darren Swamy, the West Indies captain, uh, the score reached 307 and that gave them a lead of 96 runs. And that lead of 96 runs came in pretty handy today because what um, West Indies did is they knocked off three wickets yesterday uh, in the evening and today uh, they didn't uh, find it uh, difficult at all. In fact, they, uh, in fact um, we are going to see uh, that the play is going to end on day three itself with uh, what West Indies have done, West Indies bowlers have done, is they bowled out Zimbabwe for 107. Let's look at the bowling figures. The person who did the most damage was uh, the right arm off spinner, Shane Shillingford, coming back from this West Indies lineup. The Zimbabweans have been finding it very difficult to read his uh, turn and he has been turning the ball pretty well. In fact, Shane Schillingford returned figures of 16 overs, 4 maidens, 49 runs and 6 wickets. Tremendous balling from Shane Schillingford, the Radamo spinner, making a comeback into the West Indies team. Uh, other than that, uh, Shannon Gabriel 7.4 overs, 3 maidens, 3 for 10 for him. Uh, none for 26 for Tino Best, 8 overs, 2 maidens, none for 26. He has been wicketless in this particular test match. Kemar Roche who gave the breakthrough, 10 over 7 maidens. Uh, 1 for 12. In fact, Kemar Roche uh, didn't give the break too. In fact, Raymond Price today uh, was the first to go. He was the night watchman uh, and um, in fact, he and uh, Taylor were at the crease and Raymond Price was the fifth man out with the score on 47. But uh, as I said, Zimbabwe finding it very, very difficult. Uh, they had no answer to Shane Schillingford's right arm uh, of spinners and uh, they just, uh, it was a real procession there. In fact, the highest scorer uh, was Craig Irvine. Uh, who I would say was just standing amongst the ruins uh, with an unbeaten 23 with three boundaries. Other than that, the double figures were Visu Subhanda, who made 15 with three fours, then 14 coming from Regis Chakabwa, who made six, he just uh, scratched around for six runs of 27 balls, uh, 14 coming in from Kramer with one four and one six. Other than that, uh, it's all single figures. Martino Mawai out for nine. Uh, Masakaz was out for seven. Raymond Price, the night watchman, out for seven. Brendan Taylor, the captain, out for six. Uh, in fact, uh, Malcolm Waller contributed only five runs. Chakab was out for six. Uh, Jarvis out for nine, and Chatara out for a duck. 107 all out. The West Indies bowlers are really, really making life pretty difficult for the Zimbabweans. And in the end, the because of the lead that they possessed was 96. But well, 
uh, it became absolutely a walk in the park uh, because what has happened is in fact West Indies have lost their first wicket uh, by chasing 12 runs for victory. Uh, Kiran Powell was the victim as he was caught by cream of the bowling of Chathara for 6. Chris Gale was not out on 2 and Darren Bravo not out on not. Just a mere formality. 3 more runs required after lunch. Uh, I'm sure the first ball itself is going to give the West Indies victory. So West Indies will go 1 up in this uh, test match, test series between West Indies and Zimbabwe 1 nil. Jarvis 2 overs on Medan for 7 and Chathara 1 over no Medan 1 run and 1 wicket. So I'm not going to go into any of these details. So that was as far as the proceedings were concerned as far as West Indies and Zimbabwe were concerned. But let's look at the other game uh, which happened yesterday that was the uh, second test match which was played at the Basin Reserve in Wellington. And well the, the toss was won by uh, Brendan McCallum, uh, the New Zealand captain, uh, and um, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, the New Zealand bowlers had it pretty, pretty tough. In fact, there were conditions which were assisting. In fact, Brendan McCallum won the toss, and uh, he elected to field. And I thought uh, uh, that was a good decision, even though it has been criticised in many quarters, saying that Brendan McCallum should not have put England to bat because England, uh, sitting on a princely score uh, at close of play on the first day of the second Test here at the Basin Reserve in Wellington, on 267 for two. And I'm sure uh, Brendan McClellan, the captain, uh, put the in Englishman in to bat. The reason being that Basin Reserve Wellington has always been a place where uh, the ballers have been always ruling the roost. But uh, today there was some assistance. But whatever little assistance was there, uh, I, am, I would be saying that the New Zealand ballers couldn't really make use of it. Um, in fact, uh, Neil Wagner gave them an early breakthrough by picking up the wicket of Alistair Cook, who was caught by Fulton of the bowling of fact of 17 with one boundary but after that it was a very very record opening record uh, second wicket partnership between Nick Compton and Jonathan Trott. Nick Compton went on to make back to back centuries in fact uh, he scored a century two consecutive test centuries for Nick Compton uh, and he made exactly 100 with 15 fours and what was very good about Nick Compton his confidence has really really boomed uh, after playing in India and then getting that century under his belt today yesterday we saw him uh, probably one would have seen him actually playing defensive strokes to that bo balls on the, in the first test but in the second test he was confidence personified he went for the drives he went for the pull shot anything which was wide was really uh, he went for a uh, went for some very good square drives and he also hit the ball past point uh, Nick Compton well as I said the ball was wide outside the off stump uh, probably one would have thought that Nick Compton uh, would have actually left the ball harmlessly by to the wicket keeper but uh, well he didn't do that he actually carved the balls for boundaries and Nick Compton as I said uh, was looking very good just before close of play his wicket fell but it was a record a, um, a record second wicket stand and Jonathan Trott after a long time getting into a century mode here uh, he was ha had an unbeaten 121 to his credit with 15 boundaries uh, he was more aggressive than Nick Compton uh, but in the end uh, he had an unbeaten 121 uh, towards close of play with uh, New Zealand uh, with England uh, to, uh, finishing on 267 for two with Kevin Peterson giving him company on an unbeaten 18 with one boundary Nick Compton uh, caught Taylor bowled uh, Bruce Martin the right arm leg spinner was impressive uh, in fact he was the most impressive bowler among the lot today he bowled uh, 20, 22, 27 overs, 9 minutes, 58 runs on one wicket. Uh, Nick Compton was the victim of him. He was gone for 100. Uh, Jonathan Trott uh, not out 121 at close of play with 15 fours. Kevin Pitt was not out on 18 with one boundary. And New Zealand, um, England went to close of play at 267 for two on the first day of the second test. Balling figures, uh, Tim Southey, 19 overs, 4 maidens, none for 44. Trent Bolt was not uh, impressive at all, 20 overs, 4 maidens, none for 78. Neil Wagner, 22 overs, 4 maidens, one for 70. Uh, Bruce Martin, the wicket taker and the most impressive bowler is today. The right arm, um, the left arm spinner, 20 overs, 9 maidens, one for 58. And Crane Williamson, rolling his uh, um, arm over for two overs for 14 runs. Well, as I said, um, it was a pretty... Uh, easy going for England and England finishing on 267 for two and as far as uh, the uh, the Border Gascar trophy was concerned the second um, this, uh, the third test match between India and Australia was a complete washout in Mohali in Chandigarh um, and uh, th that, that wraps up my cricket happening show for today as I am in a bit of a hurry here uh, thanks for your company and thanks for watching cricket happenings your host Ram signing off today thank you